Intel Lunar Lake benchmarks. They are out. They came out, let me see, three days ago on the 24th. Um, and, you know, the, uh, essentially Lunar Lake uh, was a chip that has a big NPU, uh, very similar to uh, what Qualcomm brought out first and AMD brought out second. I know AMD argues they did come out first with a larger uh, NPU, but there wasn't a whole lot of software uh, to be able to take advantage of that. Um, but th the claims that Intel made uh, on this chip were, uh, we're going to have superior performance and superior battery life. And um, Intel has always had good performance, but when it comes to battery life, Intel and AMD did, didn't do great. Um, uh, also, a little fun fact, um, the tiles that are used in Lunar Lake are not manufactured at Intel. They're actually manufactured at, at TSMC. So it's on, right? You have AMD, Qualcomm, and Intel solutions uh, now uh, battling it out on design uh, as opposed to um, uh, foundry and, and fab technologies. So it's literally uh, mono e mono. One unique architectural thing that Intel adds, they, they put memory onto the package and you can do some uh, pretty interesting stuff related to latency and, and lower power. So how they do. So to me, it mostly as I expected from single threaded CPU performance, uh, many thread performance, MT uh, graphics uh, and battery life uh, and, and, and NPU. But I gotta tell you, it raises a lot more questions than I have answers because the benchmarks that I saw across four or five websites, and by the way, uh, Signal, uh, Signal 65 has yet to publish uh, our tests, but, but they are on the way. Um, single threaded CPU performance, um, you know, pretty good. Some tests had Qualcomm leading, uh, PC World had Intel leading. Okay. On the same There's only one real test, right? It comes from Signal 65. I mean, there are there really well, other tests? There's really only one definitive test house, and that's Signal 65, as we say in jest. No, uh, PC World had a pretty good uh, uh, analysis. But, you know, we had both Tom's Hardware and PC World saying different things. Like, who won? On the same benchmark, okay? Um, MT, many threads. Uh, we, I knew, I mean, you're, you're doing 12 cores on, um, on Qualcomm versus eight cores. And even though, even if you have a single threaded processor that operates a lot quickly, there was just no way. That, uh, that Intel was gonna win here. And many threads, Intel and AMD are dominant, okay? When you're using uh, um, this at the same time. Uh, office productivity performance uh, under Procyon, it, uh, Intel gets gets the crown. One of the things that threw me was not only the the, the benchmarks that went, that went back and forth, uh, even on the same test, but it was the plugged versus unplugged. I should have known this because you know, AMD has had higher performance plugged in. You get a lot of boost out of that. Uh, but but I thought with Lunar Lake, you know, starting over, that uh, that that would not be the case. Qualcomm has very consistent performance when it's unplugged, um, and it appears that when you unplug Intel, uh, the performance uh, drops uh, handily, particularly on the on the CPU. Most confusing part was battery life. Tom's Hardware had Qualcomm uh, winning by 35%. Uh, Forbes on Procyon vin uh, Video had, had Intel uh, leading by 12%. Uh, Forbes Procyon productivity on Forbes, they had it, Qualcomm winning by 9%. And that Procyon productivity battery life was the one that Intel said they destroyed everybody on. So here's my thought. I was an OEM for almost 10 years on the PC front. And I worked at AMD for 11 years. And let me just tell you, this tells to me that this product out, this product was moved out quickly. And if you remember, uh, Intel pulled this product in 
uh, from what was likely a January launch, okay, um, into to hit the fourth quarter. Um, there were only two platforms that were benchmarkable, one from Asus and one from Dell. Uh, and if you compare that to the Qualcomm launch, I mean, there were, it was Dumbo dropping uh, multiple uh, solutions from Lenovo, HP, Dell, <laughs> and even Samsung. Uh, there could be power profile issues, right? That's uh, what I've been told, which is, hey, uh, when you need to benchmark something and when. Uh, but I think there's something something in the firmware. Uh, there, there's got probably going to be an update um, that that will probably give answers. And I'm, I'm leaning on Ryan to be able to have his team uh, put some of this stuff uh, into perspective. Uh, my final comment here is this was the 7 series. So there's uh, 5, 7, and 9. There is a 9 series coming out that is supposed to be a, a higher performance. And I, I believe that Intel staged this likely to, hey, we want to get the battery life. That's the monkey on our back. We want to get that out first. And then we'll follow through on performance with uh, the 9 series. And I don't expect 9 series to have as good a battery life uh, as as the 7 series. So that's it, Dan. So you covered a lot of ground and I know we've got to we got to wrap this up. So I'll just make a couple of uh, maybe more macro comments. Uh, one is Signal 65 will be the arbiter and we will put our, our, our thoughts out there. Look for Ryan Shrout on the Twitters or X, whatever you call it, to share some of that data as it comes out. We are looking at all this stuff and you're right. There were some good reviews. So I'm not saying there aren't others. I'm just saying we, uh, we've, we're going to do a very thorough job here. The second thing is that, um, Pat, is I think what Intel got what Intel wanted. And I'm going to tell you what that is. It's not obvious. It's not obvious. I think there was some concerns that it was going to be, they were going to just get blown out across the board. And that would have been really bad for Intel. But with the combination of the design with the, the, the tiles done at TSMC, they've been able to build a part that, again, even in one particular pub that says their battery life is better than the ARM uh, in the ARM based uh, <coughs> processor. Pat, that's that's kind of like even just creating a toss up is a kind of a win for Intel. Um, you know, look, I'm using a Qualcomm device every day. I'm really pleased with it. This is not a knock on what they're doing. I'm, I'm using almost all ARM devices now. It's just what's happened to come across my desk in recent. Having said that, Pat, the, the Lunar Lake part uh, seems to be very competitive. That's what the that's what Intel needed here. They needed it to be very competitive. They needed it because remember, Intel's the incumbent here. So I believe it's the competition within a benefit of a doubt being so much better that is going to be what's required for a meaningful sh market shift. And so if Intel's number one goal, given its difficult time, Pat, was protect the moat that is your strongest business right now, these numbers do not give clear read to the channels, to the commercial customers, to the uh, retailers that they have to go all in yet. I'm not saying the ARM stuff's not really good, Pat. I'm just saying I think for Intel, this was about as good as they could have hoped for in this current juncture. A pretty good set of responses and not a very clear output of who's better because it depends. And so that's where uh, my takeaway was. You definitely dug into the depths, but I, I know we've got a roll. Dude, come on. I'll tell you when we got a roll. I'm the guy who has to roll. All right. All right. We don't got a roll. Keep going then. No. Um, no, no, that was really, I'm glad you gave the macro because that's exact. The question is, how good does it need to be? Okay. Um, and, the, you know, Intel is the incumbent. It, it's a lot harder to switch people off Intel in enterprise because they're very conservative. They don't want to screw something up uh, here. And if Intel gets close and, and even price doesn't even matter that much. And that's why AMD has had a hard time getting traction. Um, I am, you know, I, I hear that, you know, AMD is stepping up what they're doing in the enterprise related to marketing. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, Qualcomm is going to have to uh, do this as well. But yeah, uh, people 
were skeptical on what Lunar Lake would deliver. <laughs> and um, they, I think, had a showing that that was better than ex people expected. Um, Not losing was winning. <laughs> yeah, you know, now the YouTubers were were ter like the YouTubers were like Intel, you know, destroyed Qualcomm and AMD, and I don't know what they were smoking. Yeah, um, out there now. There's two reviews that I'm looking forward to. You know, Linus uh, Tech Tips, and maybe even uh, maybe a hardware uh, unboxed. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's I think competitive, it's, which I, is great, right? This is Intel is competitive, right? And then you, you take the money cannon. Now, Intel is probably losing money on Lunar Lake. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's like 10% gross margin uh, or, or what's going on, but um, that is a very unprofitable uh, product uh, for them. It's kind of weird. Like, how could it be profitable for Qualcomm and AMD? Because Lisa Sue doesn't create money losing products and then why is lunar lake so unprofitable i've got to dive underneath that and it could be complexity in the design it could be uh the size of the dies the the tiles or or something uh like that but um theoretically uh, uh intel gets healthy with panther lake which is the follow-on uh on, on on 18a 